So let's review our laws of exponents. When we are multiplying, we keep the base and we add the exponents, but you have to remember to multiply your coefficients. So if we have something basic, just like x to the fifth times x to the third, five plus three gives us x to the eighth. But if I have numbers in front, like this, I have to multiply my coefficients first. So four times two gives me eight, and then I work with the exponents. When I'm dividing, we keep the base and we subtract the exponents. So x to the ninth divided by x squared, nine minus two gives me x to the seventh. But once again, if I have something like 10x to the ninth, over 2x to the second, I need to do 10 divided by 2, which gives me 5, and then I can work with my exponents. Power to a power rule, you're going to keep the base and multiply the exponents. So if I have x to the fourth to the third, this is really like x to the fourth times x to the fourth times x to the fourth. So then you could use your rule for multiplying, which would be to add four plus four plus four gives me x to the 12th. But the shortcut is just to multiply because four times three gives me x to the 12th. And remember once again, if I have something like three x to the fourth y squared squared, I have to give this exponent to each piece and essentially distribute that exponent. So this would be three squared x to the fourth squared y squared squared. You don't have to show this step, but just realize that that's what's actually happening. So this gives me nine x to the eighth y to the fourth. For negative exponents, we keep the loc uh, we change the location and we change the sign. And you have to be careful that you only change the location of the base. So for example, if I have four x to the negative two, the four is my coefficient, the x is the base. So I'm only moving the base. So this would be four over x squared. If I have something like this, 4x in parentheses to the negative 2, now this entire parentheses is the base. And that would become 1 over 4x squared, and then I would need to simplify. 4 squared is 16, x squared is x squared. Our rule for rational exponents is power over root, so x to the 3 halves is the square root of x to the third, because this is my power and this is my root. A square root is implied, but remember that if it's anything else, you have to show it. So for example, if this was 5x to the 5 thirds, Remember, once again, we have to worry about the base. This is the base, so only this part gets put under the radical. So this would be equal to 5 as a coefficient in the front times the cube root of x to the fifth. And notice how my cube root, I put the 3 inside the little spot of the radical. Zero exponents, anything to the zero power is 1. So once again, you have to be careful about the base. If I have 2x to the zero, only this part is 1. So this is like 2 times 1, which is 2. Versus if I had something like this, the entire parentheses is the base, so it equals 1. And if I had something like this, it would be 4y squared because this part becomes 1. So now let's move on to our growth formula or our interest formulas. So these you have to memorize. 
They are not given to you on the reference sheet, and they are usually not given to you in the question either on the region, so you must memorize them. A is your final amount. P is your initial amount. R is your rate, but remember that my rate must always be as a decimal. So for example, if I gave you something like 3% in the question, that becomes 0 0.03. If I gave you something like 0.5%, that becomes 0 0.005. N is the number of times compounded. which I'll go over in a second. T is the time, and by default, it's in years unless it's other otherwise specified in the question. E is the number in the calculator. Okay, and in order to get that, I hit second LN, which is next to the four. So let's go over what we replace n with. So the number of times compounded is n. So this is the variable. Sorry. This is the variable n. If it says annually, we replace n with 1. Semi-annually, 2. Quarterly, 4. Monthly, 12. Weekly, 52. Daily, 365. And if the question says continuously, we use the equation PERT, A equals P E to the R T. So now let's talk about growth and decay in general. So those two were examples of our exponential growth formulas because when we are talking about interest, it's typically growth. So growth in general is when B is larger than 1 and decay is when B is between 0 and 1. And I'm referring to this formula here, which you once again must memorize. So in this formula, y equals a b to the x, a is the initial, and b is the growth factor. So for example, if they say something like a growth factor of 2 or it's tripling, that's your b value. If they give you a rate, b is equal to 1 plus or minus r. So b is the factor and r is the rate as a decimal. So you have to be able to convert back and forth between these two formulas. So in general, growth is when b is greater than 1, and it's a plus sign. It's addition. It's increasing. And b is equal to 1 plus r. My graph is going up, increasing. For growth, b is between 0 and 1. My graph is decreasing. b is equal to 1 minus r, it's subtraction. And key words that you're going to look for are loses value, decreases, or depreciates. Those are our key words in a word problem that tell us that it's decay. Or, of course, if they say decaying. We did talk a little bit about half life. So, in general, half-life is a decreasing formula, so it's y equals a b to the x, but remember that b is going to be equal to 0.5, and then it's x over the half-life. 
And if we're doing double time, that would be growth. So I'll put that over here. That would be y equals a times 2 to the x over whatever the double time is. Okay, I'll just put t. So those are two applications that we've seen from time to time, but they are just a specific subset of our growth and decay formulas. So we have exponentials and logs, and in order to convert between them, we use keep the base and switch. So for example, if I had something like 5 to the x equals 27, that would be log. I'm going to keep the base. So log base 5 and switch. I'm going to put the 27 next to it and the x on the other side. And in order to put something like this in my calculator, I would use alpha window 5. If we're solving equations with fractional exponents, that would look something like 3x to the 5 halves equals 27. When I do that, I want to isolate the base. So this is my base. So my first step here would be to divide by 3, and then I would raise both sides to the reciprocal power. Remember, reciprocal power means to flip the fraction. And then we're going to solve for the variable if we need it. And remember that an even root, and for roots, we look to the denominator because we do power over root like we did in our laws of exponents before. When there's an even root, it's always plus and minus. Because when we square root, that's an even root, we plus and minus. So a reciprocal power, when I flip it, I'm taking a root. So if my denominator is even, I have to put a plus and minus. And then lastly, when we're solving exponential equations, we always want to isolate the exponential expression, and then we're going to convert it to a log, which is keep the base and switch like we did up above. And then from there, you're going to use your calculator. If it's algebraic, that's when you're going to use alpha window five but remember if it's not algebraically we can always use y1 y2 and find our point of intersection on the graph